Good evening and a warm welcome to Thursday night's edition of Primetime News. I'm Salima Shimwe Fellini. Leading the bulletin tonight, the decorum of the National Assembly on Wednesday was thrown out the window with Landless People's Movement's Heni Sebeb challenging Environment Minister Pohamba Shifeta to a fist fight outside amidst the pandemonium. Sebeb also accused Shifeta of having a Bachelor of Law that he never sat for, claiming it was done on his behalf by Justice Minister Yvonne Dausab, a former university law lecturer. The heated exchange emanated from a motion by popular democratic movement PDM lawmaker Alma Dienda, who wants Article 47 of the Constitution revisited. So we must, I think it, it is incorrect for Honorable Minister of Cora here to come and say uh, the issue is constitutional and therefore cannot be discussed. Every single motion, no, 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 please let me, let me finish. Every single motion that is introduced in this house is done so to effect or influence some sort of policy. And policy is directed by constitution. Okay. So there is no issue that will ever be a, a non-constitutional issue. Okay. Honorable Speaker, all I'm saying is all the motions that are introduced oh. here. Excuse me. Uh, what, what is it? Excuse me. What is it? Which channel? Which channel? Excuse me. Speaker, I did that on the basis of what he called that I'm a minister of Cora. He must. She must. Who, say who, who that. said that? She said that. Who said that? 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 No dialogue, no dialogue. No dialogue, no dialogue. No, no. No, no, no. Order, order, order. Order, 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 order. Order, order. Order, order. Listen, listen. Let's, let's cut it. Let's, now. This, um, no, honourable no, member, honourable no, member, please, could you, could you sit down? I think we need could you sit down for a while? We need to have a protest here. I'm drawing a line. No, 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 no. Honourable Sepeb. Honourable Sepeb, I'm, I'm drawing a line. Enough is enough. People from close to 360 homesteads at Shikondo village in Kapako constituency of the Kavango West region were on Wednesday relocated to higher ground after their homes were submerged in water earlier this year. The Office of the Prime Minister's National Disaster Risk Management Unit, along with the Kavango West Regional Council, erected 27 tents to house the flood victims temporarily. The Office of the Prime Minister also provided food assistance in the form of maize meal bags and canned fish, mosquito nets, portable water and mattresses, with the latter being given to the elderly and needy women. Speaking at the setting up of the temporary relocation camp, Executive Director in the Office of the Prime Minister, I. Ben Nashandi, said the shelter is a temporary measure. The Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism has urged farmers to report damages caused by elephants to crop gardens at farms. Chief Spokesperson of the Ministry, Romeo Muyunda, in an interview with the Namibia Press Agency on Tuesday, said the Ministry does assist farmers when cases are reported to the Ministry following an incident of elephants destroying several gardens in Kunene South recently. He added that only farmers with gardens of more than 10 hectares are assisted either with funds or equipment to rebuild their gardens. The ministry does not compensate for backyard gardens. We'll be back shortly after the news roundup. Thank you. 
the Ministry of Finance today launched academic procurement management programs aimed at offering government institutions capacity development and training in public procurement. The programs to be offered by the Namibian Institute of Public Administration and Management, University of Namibia, and the Namibia University of Science and Technology comprises short courses ranging from five days to six months. The programs to be offered by the Namibian Institute of Public Administration and Management, University of Namibia, and the Namibia University of Science and Technology comprises short courses ranging from five days to six months. The programs also include a one-year Namibia Qualification Framework Level 4 Certificate, an Advanced Diploma in Procurement Supply, a three-year Bachelor of Procurement Management, and a Postgraduate Diploma in Procurement Management. In a speech delivered on his behalf at the event, Finance Minister Ipumbushimi said, Government has been experiencing challenges in implementing the Public Procurement Act, which aims to, among others, inject greater transparency and accountability in the public procurement processes, curb corruption and promote integrity in the conduct of public procurement, and promote value for money by striking a fine balance between quality and cost. Among these challenges, he highlighted the technical skills and institutional capacity among the implementing offices, ministries, and agencies. A critical mass of skills is needed across the public sector to efficiently execute this function, realize internal operational efficiency, and achieve an optimal turnaround in the adjudication of bids. The minister went on to say, The programs are aligned to the market needs and specifically responds to the demand and training needs of the public sector in the field of public procurement management. Josephine Simeon, Nampe News. The sports news will follow shortly after the economics roundup. And in sports news tonight, senior national netball team coach Julian Mayer said competing at the 2021 Spa Challenge in Cape Town, South Africa will be a good way of benchmarking themselves against the best teams on the continent. The 2021 Spa Challenge, which is slated for 24 to 31 March 2021, will see six teams, Spa Proteas, Presidents 12, Spa Baby Proteas Under 21, Uganda, Namibia and the Uganda Under 21 national teams competing for top honours. In an interview with the Namibia Press Agency on Wednesday, Mayer said competing against teams ranked above them will help in assessing the level at which Namibia's team plays. The Central Volleyball Association will this coming weekend start with its games following a layoff of nearly a year due to restrictions put in place in March 2020 to help curb the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. The league, which consists of teams based in Vintuk, will kick off its activities at the Israel Patrick Iambo Police College in Olympia. In an interview with the Namibia Press Agency recently, Central Volleyball Association Chairperson Tobias Eden Watelulo said these games will mark the resumption of volleyball activities. We'll be back shortly.
That's all the news we had for you tonight. Many thanks for tuning in. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe, like, share, and click on the notifications bell to stay up to date with the latest happenings locally and globally. From myself, Silima Shimwefeleni, and the entire Nampa crew, it's good night.